Hi there, my name is Kay Moon and I'm a Twin Flame Channel and Western Astrologer. And this is a video about the full moon in Scorpio occurring on May 16th, 2022 at 12, 12 a.m. If you happen to be on the Eastern seaboard of the United States, if not, please check your local time, uh, check a time zone converter for your local time. Our Full moon in Scorpio happens alongside a lunar eclipse, and the eclipse is basically like a full moon uh, on steroids, says one of my favorite astrology teachers, Nadia Shaw. Full moons tend to portend closings, completions, endings, the culmination of a cycle, things getting to their zenith before coming back into or descending back into uh, a new beginning. And so when you add that into a lunar eclipse cycle, what you have going on is an ending that's almost two, three, four, five, six, ten 10x what you would with a standard full moon when you've got a lunar eclipse with it. And there's our full moon there. You can see the moon at that 25th degree of Scorpio sitting with the south node. Uh, and this is kind of, I guess, what makes it so, so interesting. It can feel for some a little bit karmic. It can feel for some a little bit um, fateful, if you will. There's a, there's a vibration here of kind of what's closing now was meant to close, what's ending now was meant to end, and what's meant to happen next is what will happen next. So it's a beautiful energy, the completion energy, but it's a, it's a challenging one. And we're certainly seeing that, um, you know, globally at this moment in time where there's, <sighs> goodness. I mean, here in the United States, we're seeing a lot of death energy. We're in this fourth month of this invasion of Ukraine. We've got a lot of election energy happening around the globe, very significant turning point elections, globally speaking, uh, that are really deciding our country is going to move in a direction that really serves the people or move in a direction that serves uh, kind of corporations. This is a very, it's a big moment. I can't understate that enough. So here's some aspects to this full moon. We've got Saturn squaring the nodes and also squaring the sun moon opposition here. And th this full moon, we I talked about this Saturn square to the nodes at the last a new moon video. So the new moon that just occurred, new moon in Taurus, there was a solar eclipse with that one. This one is, it's a continuation of that theme. So if you missed that one, I strongly recommend that you go back and listen to it because there were some themes that came out in that video that illuminated these are kind of working the best way I can see it. These are working a bit in tandem or like a part one and a part two. So you know how when you watch a movie, if you listen to the sequel or watch the sequel or you read the sequel in the book first, it doesn't make as much sense as it does. It's not as rich as if you were to listen to part one or see part one or read part one. So if you didn't go back and look at, if you haven't seen that one yet, the solar eclipse in Taurus that just happened two weeks ago on my channel, it's the last set of videos just posted. I strongly encourage it because it'll help you understand how to, how to, how to see these energies in context, how to see the bigger picture of what's going on. Um, instead of just kind of working with the minutia, you can work with the big picture and understand your life in context. So we've got a T-square with Saturn here, which I'm going to break down in a moment. We've got a trine with this Neptune-Mars conjunction here to uh, our moon and a sextile there to the sun. We've also got a sextile from Pluto to the moon as well. So when you put all of this together, you know, all of these different aspects 
you know, Pluto having being a major part of the lunar conversation, Saturn being a major part of the lunar conversation, Neptune and Mars being a major part of the conversation, right? Pluto definitively, especially when Pluto and Saturn are working together, they tend to bring about their ending and separation energies out of one another. Pluto on its own represents alchemical transformation, the state change that moves, you know, lead to gold or caterpillar to butterfly, um, you know, egg and sperm into human life. That's Pluto. It is the place of alchemical change. Saturn, in addition to completions, can really talk about completions that are there, separations that are there for our own good. It's like, you know, when two, when two kids get together and they're just having such a great time, but they get so rowdy that they both need a time out to calm down before one or both of them gets hurt. Saturn brings that kind of energy to the table where it's like, whoa, 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 slow it on down, take some deep breaths. Both of you go back to your own corners. Let's, let's come back to ourselves here. So when you put the two of them together, they tend to bring out the ending energy in one another, especially when they're both speaking to a significant planetary lunation like this one, an eclipse. And this is an eclipse in Scorpio. Scorpio is ruled by the planet Pluto, and Scorpio also represents endings, completions, closing out of cycles. So there, uh, the, I, wow, it just, the ending energy here is very prominent. Um, you know, there's been, in, you know, some deaths, there's like a lot of death energy in the air, not just in my own family and in my own world and my friends and family world, but also, you know, in the world at large, there's been some major shootings happening here in the United States where I'm stationed. Um, like I said, we're moving into you know, this, this invasion of Ukraine, which has pretty much you know, destroyed the, herit the, the heritage sites, the museums that hold a lot of the history, you know, the major cultural institutions and infrastructure of Ukraine have been completely destroyed in a way that even if this war were to end tomorrow, there, there kind of really isn't a Ukraine in the same way for the Ukrainian people to come back to. Like what they had, that's gone. There will be something new that happens after this, something different, but what was can't be anymore because it's been destroyed. And that's kind of the energy that we've been working with here as we've come into this eclipse cycle. Like I said, really good idea to listen to part one because that had all the new beginning information. This has all of the, and now we complete the cycle, act two information in it. So you add to this some of the Neptune Martian energy here from Pisces, Pisces being that final sign of the Zodiac, Mars being about motivation, Neptune spirituality. There is a drive to kind of put a period on some sentences here, uh, whether it be in the world of relationship for you, certain financial matters for you living circumstances, family circumstances that no longer work for you. There's a motivation here to where things have dragged on too long to put an end to it. And where some people, you know, I've mentioned it, there are some people who are finding at this particular lunar eclipse that it's just their time to transition away from their earthly incarnation into the next step of their journey for their soul. So if you or someone you love is experiencing loss right now, I just want you to know, you know, my heart goes out to you. It's been a very difficult period of time for a number of people. Um, but there is, there is in this a little bit of understanding that What's happened at this time is also meant to happen at this time. 
in this way as Uranus sits so close to the North Node, which I'm going to talk about more momentarily. So if there's anyone that you love in your life that has taken a step back from you in relationship or has exited your life, meaning, you know, they've transitioned to another realm, just know that if it was their time, that there is something divinely guided about this for you personally, some lesson in this for you personally, some growth in this for you personally, that you can take from this, even in the loss, we are also in the midst of life. All right, so just keep that in mind. When I look more deeply at this, and I'm going to break down each of these aspects momentarily. We've got that Mercury retrograde going on. So I'm going to hit that. We've got a major aspect here between Chiron and Venus, which I will also discuss. Um, and yeah, okay. Those are the major things I want to talk about as well as this Uranus conjunct the North Node, which lends us a bit of hope for what's to come in the next 60 days because we are going to hit some new beginning energy here very shortly. And it's important to understand that even though it's been hard, there is hope, especially with Jupiter now coming out of the last sign of the Zodiac and back into the first sign, Aries, uh, as we speak, there's a lot of hope for new beginnings, even though things have been really, really difficult here for some time. Before I get into all of that, I just want to say thank you guys for your patience and that if you'd like to book some time with me, there are, I think, two 30-minute spots left in my calendar for this week and one one-hour spot left in my calendar for this week. And then there's just a couple of sessions left next week. This is if you have been struggling with tough eclipse energies or the eclipse energies have brought so much richness, so much transformation, growth and change, and you just like some validation on, okay, I feel a lot of shifting, but what's up? How do I use this? I would recommend you book one of those sessions, especially um, if you are a Taurus, a Scorpio, an Aquarius, or a Leo. These changes are going to impact you the most because we are in a fixed eclipse cycle. And those are the four fixed signs if you have significant placements in Scorpio, Taurus, Leo, or Aquarius. Otherwise, if you just are noticing lots of change and you could use a little support, validation, clarity, uh, let's get into it. Grab those sessions before they're gone. I'd be honored to talk to you this month of May before we get into June. All right. So like I said, this is a bit of a continuation from the solar eclipse. That was two weeks ago where we had this opening energy that really got the ball rolling on some new things in life. So have a listen to that. Uh, from that new moon in Taurus. And we're exploring themes of change and transition here. And we're exploring endpoints that allow us to move into our next chapters. You know, one of the smartest questions one of my clients has ever asked me, she came in a few months ago and she said, you know what? In uh, maybe about a month ago, it was last month in April, she said, in the same 30 days, both my sister and my father passed. And I'm just curious, can you look, what would be the divine purpose of such an exit all at one time? Like, what was that meant to give me? And when, you know, I looked at the dates of the passing and, you know, the energy and how it influenced her chart, I had the opportunity to say, to reveal to her you know, this is the gift in this for you. And this is what their parting gives you the opportunity to do, have, or be that otherwise you wouldn't have had the opportunity to. Um, and I was able to see like, there's this change in your life and there's this change in your life. And then there's this growth and that growth. And it really fostered a sense of validity for her own intuition. Thank God. Cause she had already intuitively picked up a lot of that but also it allowed her to move into a lot of the acceptance energy of her grieving process. And when we can get to that acceptance energy, it does facilitate our ability to allow 
our lives to move forward and release, you know, our loved ones from the, you know, an energetic attachment so they can move forward in their next highest incarnation as well. So if that's something you'd like to talk about, we can certainly do that. This emo- there is something emotionally challenging about this. I have to say, if you're not dealing with death in and of itself, with Saturn squaring both the sun and the moon in this T-square, you know, there is something very emotionally difficult. Saturn sitting in Aquarius and square to the moon in Scorpio, Aquarius being the sign of the people, the collective, and our be- a capacity to grow forward. Scorpio being, again, that sign of endings and completions. It's bringing up a lot of our emotional responsibilities to ourselves, to our own pain, and to the lessons that that pain is revealing to us. Scorpio can really represent our shadow and the things we'd rather not have to deal with, the things we'd rather not have to see, the things about ourselves that we try to control and hide, the secrets that we have about ourselves. Saturn squaring this configuration with the south node and a lunar eclipse, there's really this kind of existential questions, like, are your secrets making you sick? Are you not speaking up for yourself, expressing yourself in key places in your life in ways that are causing you to self-destruct? That's what some of this question is about, because Saturn is really saying you need to come back to wholeness and integrity at this time. But in order to do that, you got to be willing to let go of some of the shadow energy of, you know, Scorpio there shame, secrets, hiding, um, all of that. And with Saturn squaring the sun in this way, there is this, you know, op, there's this, there's a heaviness to this. There's a recognition that I can't keep going the way I have been going. There are lessons here in my own pain that I need to be accountable for at this time, responsible for at this time where we've overgiven, which is a key quality of Aquarius. Aquarius people can really, hats off to you guys, man. They can overgive when in their shadow energy. So where we've overgiven on account of our own shadow, trying to compensate or hide or make up for, um, or where we've not given enough, you know, trying to, you know, instead of being generous and open-hearted and we've been more shut down, you know, where we've overgiven or not given enough, where we're living at either one of those extremes and out of balance, this is a karmic turning of the tables, like a bit of a faded reversal. And it's aided and abetted by this Mars and Neptune here in Pisces uh, that are aspecting both the moon and the sun as well. Trying the moon, sextile the sun. There's a spiritual motivation coming from within at this time to make a change that's stronger than it's ever been. In other words, there's that, um, there's this pull to not just make a change, but there's this kind of like, even if you don't make it, life is going to make it for you. That's what's unfolding here where life is kind of going, you know what? You held on to this long enough. You've dragged the dead horse behind you. It's skinless. It's just bones at this point. You've been giving it mouth to mouth, trying to make it live again. It's time to let go of certain things at this time. And that song, there's a song by Michael Jackson called uh, Man in the Mirror that um, It was a famous song, I guess, made famous back in the 90s, the 1990s. If you haven't heard it, I strongly recommend you have a look at the lyrics, but it's about recognizing that change is really inevitable, but the only way anything around us changes is when we inside of ourselves change first. 
And so that's what this full moon in Scorpio is really talking about here. Now, the trick with this is to not get caught in illusions with our friend Jupiter sitting so love lovingly close to Neptune and Mars and haul off in the direction of a lie to ourselves and to other people, which is certainly possible with this energy to, you know, get really committed to, you know, our illusions. And that's okay. Sometimes we need to go on that journey. Um, or getting caught up in thinking that we can placate the bear that we have poked where we've taken too much. It's like, oh, I'll just offer a kind of superficial apology and we can just go back to the way things were. Mm, probably not. Probably not. There's too much having shifted here, like the tectonic plates are shifting the very foundation upon which many relationships are based on at this point. And so globally, we're seeing, you know, and we'll hear more about this coming forward, but we're certainly seeing it publicly where there are some new uh, nations looking to join uh, the NATO treaty. Um, you know, new relationships and alliances that may be being formed privately will, will be become, will become public. The ending of certain relationships may be happening privately, but those will also become public at a later date as well. Like I said, the trick is not to get caught up in our illusions, thinking that platitudes will work or placating the bear that we've been poking all along will work. There, there is a fundamental change in the power dynamics that's really starting now, but we're going to see it even more next year as Pluto moves into Aquarius and we move into the Aries Libra eclipse cycle, Pluto representing power. Mark my words, there will be people and places that you thought would never you know, either stand up for themselves, maybe you never thought you had the backbone to stand up for yourself, or, you know, countries that have never or groups that have never stood up for themselves before in this certain ways, you will see the power structures dramatically shift. And the beginning point is here, the beginning point around a lot of this is now. So, um, you know, just keep that in mind that there's so much transformation and it's really coming from a place of recognizing that the old power structures of our own lives are crumbling and it's time to make some choices, put our money where our mouth is, walk the talk around our futures. And that really starts now. So there can be some eye openers during this period about the people around us as well, who we think they are versus who they really are. There's some clarity and illumination about ourselves, who we've been to other people and who they have been to us. Um, and the tolerability and intolerability of certain behaviors as we come to see things through the lens of what's not working in our lives. Uh, this particular moment in time, like I said, listen to that part one and then listen to this part two. There's some pain that can be that is surfacing for many people at this period of time that's operating as a real clarifier um, as a result of perhaps giving others the benefit of the doubt maybe too much or taking advantage of others good graces maybe too much and now realizing the hard way where we may have burned bridges or allowed other people to burn bridges with us where we've overstepped and let our own agenda compromise our ability to be connected with others. Coming to mind in the public realm as an example of this is the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial situation, um, where you know we're just seeing a lot of like the the worst of humanity between two people on display, and surrounding it, you know we're seeing a lot of shadow side of individuals come out as people comment on it and 
you know, take sides, take up positions on what these two people are doing and how they're working through the dissolution of their alliance. And so uh, it's a turning point moment and it really reveals to ourselves where we have to change if we want anything to change in our lives. Like I said, it doesn't really matter, you know, if you're pro pro Johnny Depp, pro Amber Heard, you know, I, I don't really get into all of that. What I'm saying is that at the bigger picture, what you can see is that there's a wall that got hit between the two of them that is forcing them to come back to themselves and deal with whatever junk they brought to the connection so that connection can no longer be that way in their lives from this point forward ever again. It is a fundamental shift from the roots up for both of them. Okay. So like I said, um, a lot of this is like really further highlighted by this Chiron Venus situation, you know, the way Jupiter has just popped out into Aries for the first time in 12 years. Um, both, you know, Chiron, Venus and Jupiter, they're all in Aries and this Mercury retrograde alongside it is really facilitating a lot of this kind of self-reflective got to make a change energy as well. So I'm going to unpack a lot of that in just a moment. I just wanted to say, if you're starting to notice some of these things is resonating for you, please hit the like button. And if you're new, please subscribe. Uh, definitely helps the channel circulate and grow. And if you're wanting to talk about this stuff, you can find me over at Kmoon Astro. The link is in the description box below to book sessions with me this week, next week, and the following, because this energy is going to be in place as we move into the fall eclipse cycle as well. You'll see some carryover pieces of information. You want to be prepared for that. Okay. Now, ultimately, our power is there for the taking in this energy. And I, I think that's really important to mention that our power is there for the taking. Pluto does represent power. Uh, neither good nor bad power on its own is neutral. It's how we wield it that causes it to be negative or positive. Sextiling the moon here, we have that sextile. Power is there for the taking, but, but, but it's there for the taking, but this isn't power given to us. It is power taken. I cannot overemphasize that enough. This is a moment of taking your power back, not waiting for somebody to just casually recognize that, oh, you weren't included. Oh, they stepped on your toes. By confronting our own fears, um, and it's by our own choices that our power is restored, our own choices and our own actions, not by anyone else doing anything different. And so, like I said, there's a bit of a revelation in this, especially with the Mercury retrograde on certain maybe decisions we've made, perspectives that we've had, ways we've been interacting with people prior to now with Chiron and Venus talking to one another, some wounds, some scarring in love that we may have experienced during connection where lights are on now. It's like, oh, okay, I got it. I'm, I'm wise to the game here. I see, I, I see what it is in this interaction or this dynamic with my boss or my kids or my, my ex or, you know, my spouse or my friend or my sister, or whatever it is, there's a little bit of like, oh, okay, I see. You're not changing. Got it. Got it. And I, there's a real A, need to accept it. B, if you're not going to change and I don't like the dynamic, then I need to change. And see how that works? <laughs> Instead of trying to work it out with them, this is a, no, this is time for me to work it out with me and come to terms with the fact that this, if there's, especially if there's a pattern involved and with Pluto and Saturn in the mix, there probably has been, this is who you are. And so again, coming back to that world stage energy, 
you know, if you look at the history there with NATO and with Russia and with Putin, I'm not surprised that Finland decided, you know, given the history, a little more protection with a little more alliances with a few more other countries would, would be a good thing to realign themselves in another way. Not, I'm not pro-NATO. I'm not against NATO. I'm just saying, <laughs> given the history that we have seen here, you know, with, with Putin and his kind of like, I'll just kind of usurp. I'll just go take what I need. He did it, you know, several years ago when he annexed Crimea. He's doing it again now with Ukraine. It's like, okay, how many times do we need to see this to know that this is how, you know, this circumstance operates? How many times do you need to trip over the same stone to actually avoid the stone going forward? So it's that, you know, kind of energy, that kind of recognition. Now let's examine this Mercury retrograde. Um, again, like I said, I'm not for or against any of it. I'm just saying, you know, it's, I'm not surprised by it based on what the astrology is saying. There has to be a shift in power dynamics. So here's our Mercury retrograde. They're in the sign of Gemini. Uh, we're on week two of it. So much fun. <laughs> tongue in cheek. That was a joke for people who don't know my humor. Um, Mercury retrograde can be notorious for bringing about um, sometimes technological challenges. At times it can slow down communication, fire miscommunications and misunderstandings. However, this particular Mercury retrograde, I'm noticing play out more in the arena of relationships, right? And so, uh, especially because of the way the Mars retrograde will also be in the same sign at the tail end of this year, uh, Gemini in and of itself in the world of relationships represents siblings, cousins, and neighbors, so there could be a revisitation of certain conversations with people who fall into that category, but also people who fall into the category of soul family and classmates. So you may notice some of these people, you know, just kind of like popping up with communications, a little bit out of nowhere, you know, with something to say, or you may notice in yourself, hmm. I got something to say. <laughs> Remember that time we talked about A, B, and C? Well, I'm not really resolved about that. I'd like to reopen that conversation. Let's have it, let's relook at this together. And so this Mercury retrograde is playing a role in this too. Now that we are the moon and uh, sorry, now that Mercury and Neptune are not in as tight a conversation as they were before, that was disharmonious. Now that Mercury and the moon are in conjunct, which is perfect because that moon makes us super emotional, but Mercury allows us to think more clearly. Um, it's a great time to revisit certain conversations that may have come up at more emotional times prior to now. Because at this time, like I said, there's greater emotional clarity to speak from our own needs as, you know, sometimes they counsel you in construct constructive communication to say, use I statements or the I perspective without blaming others. It's the opportunity to do that without letting them continue to operate an imbalanced power dynamic with us, either because there's just mainly because there's just like too much backbone here. There's too much in touchness with our own integrity and recognition of like, wow, like I really, really shot myself in the foot with this. So I'm going to have to make some changes for me. This Jupiter in Aries is only supporting this as well. Jupiter in Aries here and this Chiron and uh, Venus in Aries, because when Jupiter is in Aries, our hope, our optimism, our faith, our betting, our money is on ourselves. 
we have attention on making our own lives better, bringing improvement to who we are. Um, and this is such a great thing, especially where we have kind of bent over backwards to try and placate and negotiate with other people. And they've just like, you gave them a, that phrase. There's an American phrase for those of you who are from other countries called, if you give them an inch, they'll take a mile. I guess the equivalent to that in, in the metric system is you give one person a centimeter and they take a kilometer. Is you know, it's like you give a little, they take everything, right? And so this Mercury retrograde trying Jupiter at this time uh, is giving, or not trying, but sextile, sorry, it's not a trine, it's a 60 degree angle, sextile Jupiter uh, is giving us an opportunity to rethink our decisions and the way we've chosen to show up with other people and whether or not we've acted in our own best interests or whether or not we've shot ourselves in the foot. And that can mean so many different things to so many different people. Like I said, for some of you, there's going to be the revelation like, wow, I've really burned some bridges by taking more than I gave. For others of you, it's going to be, wow, I have really let people burn bridges with me by letting them, by giving too much and not allowing this to be more balanced. These revelations will come to the surface now, allowing people to just get more centered in their own wholeness and speak from that place. The Chiron Venus thing also sees to this. It also ensures that this, this is what happens from here. There's a rectification of our own behaviors and interactions. There's a rectification of our accountability to what we've been through. The Chiron Venus thing uh, is now for some people, um, this Chiron Venus situation is in the love world. And again, it's going to be helpful if you watched part one, which was, you know, the, the new moon, because there was a lot of love energy up at the new moon, like romantic new beginnings, beautiful energy for new relationships. Now comes as we hit the full moon in Scorpio, some spiritual clarity that this is where to become one, that there's a merge here. There's a soul merge here, that this is where, wow, I'm not just attracted to you. I, I'm in love and I love who you are as who you are. So that's a really beautiful energy here too. Um, you know, for some of you, like I said, maybe somewhere in the last six months that really peaked with the new moon in Taurus, uh, that you've maybe met someone that you can spend some quality time with going forward. And for some, this last 60 days has been the beginning of a really, like, maybe the kind of romance you haven't had in your life in years. So that's a real gift that there is a coming together in this energy where you may feel seen, gotten, deeply connected with by another person and deeply healed in the love that you are sharing at this time with Chiron and Venus talking to one another. There's a healing energy to the way that love is, it's helping you to fill in and dress some of those wounds that may have been with you for a long time. Now for others, this has been a time that's revealed your deepest wounding in love to you, your deepest scars, your deepest fears, your deep, deepest pain, the things that have made it hard to open your own heart. And with the energy of this particular full moon in Scorpio, it's giving us the chance, if this is your story, where we have the power to finally confront that pain and take the necessary steps to heal our woundedness so we can be ready to love again. And so that we can heal and open our hearts again. And so whether you are having a moment of self-love and recognizing, wow, yeah, I'm in order for me to even be with another human at all, I'm going to have to really lean into 
dressing my own wounds and tending my own pain and loving my scars here, or whether it's been a moment of deeply connecting and soul merge with another, stepping in out of singlehood and into committed partnership, it's really nice energy. It's a really nice energy. Either one is meant for your growth, meant for your evolution. We're on the verge with this energy of a complete breakthrough in our life path. Um, and that, that life path breakthrough really peaks for us in about July, but the energy can be felt, you know, as of last month and well into late summer with Uranus conjunct the North node here, here's Uranus and there's the North node. This is a rare occurrence for Uranus and the North node to speak by conjunction in this way. It does not happen very often, but when it happens, you bet your life is going to change 180 degrees. People who, um, and that for many of us with Taurus representing money, this is a huge financial change for you. With Taurus representing love, there can be huge changes in the arena of love and connection for you. Um, with Venus, it's ruling sign representing love. For others, Taurus also represents the physical body, the corporeal form. There can be changes to that as well um, that are kind of just take your life in a completely new direction, okay? These effects, like I said, can be felt now. You'll continue to feel them. It'll peak in July, um, but light, it's a life-changing year for many of us as new pathways and timelines open and doorways to the past begin to fully close. Many of you are already seeing these two things occur in your love lives, the way you make your money, and uh, some of you even with the physical body, like I said. And this opening is meant to be, it's faded, it's divinely guided with Uranus, the original divine counterpart here, speaking to the North Node, the, the direction we're meant to be growing in right next to it, okay? And so this year marks a major fork in the road, a path change in many people's lives that permanently puts them in a new or unexpected direction. It could have been planned for, it might come out of left field, but it's absolutely a divinely guided change. So please know the more we hold on, the harder this is going to be. It's likely to be hardest for those people with significant placements in Taurus, Scorpio, Leo, or Aquarius, like I said. So if this is you, or just anyone who's struggling to embrace these changes, I highly recommend booking with me over at kmoonastro.com. We can have a look at how you can work with this energy so that it's not so heavy, so that you can have more fluidity with it, so that you're not feeling so torn or like life is suppressing what it is you truly want or who you really are. Even though the spring eclipses are complete with this particular lunar eclipse, the fall eclipses are going to bring round two of the issues that we've been confronting in the month of May and April. So if you want to be prepared for that, now's a great time to get on my calendar. Thank you so much for your likes, subscribes, your shares. If you'd like to book some time with me, like I said, find me at Kmoon Astro. Definitely have a listen to what I would consider the part one of this. And I will see you at the next Lunation. Take great care and bye for now.